You know, I think because, um, because I associate Indiana so much with my childhood that it's kind of a, you know, it's a perfectly plotted story where I get to finish where I began. Um, it means a lot to me. I had a particular childhood that, um, that I associate very much with Bloomington, Indiana, although it may in fact be the childhood that many people in the 1950s had, which is just enormous freedom, you know, uh, uh, a lot of kids in the neighborhood, a lot of roaming in packs, um, a lot of solitary time as well. One of the things that really shocked and um, dismayed me when I moved to California is that the yards were all fenced. Because I was used to just, you know, being able to go through the backyards. Um, there, was, there was just so much territory that was ours. And um, I, think, I think Michael Chabon has talked about the kind of freedom that we had and, and said something that really rang very true for me, which was that every time you stepped out of the door of your house, it was possible that an adventure was about to start. You know, that, that our parents were not watching us the way parents watch kids now and that, that something could happen, something exciting could happen. And I, I think, you know, not only was that a wonderful way to grow up, but, um, but works for writers. You know, you, you open page one on a, the book you're writing and you think maybe an adventure will start. Fingers crossed. I decided that I would be a writer on my 30th birthday. Um, I had written most of my life, but I, to say to myself or think to myself, I'm going to be a writer, was just a step further than I, you know, it seemed very inflated, very, uh, very unlikely. Um, but on my 30th birthday, I thought that that's really what I want. And so um, even though it still seemed very unlikely, it was definitely not going to happen if I didn't try. Uh, I've always felt lucky that um, that I just I know a lot of writers who come to writing because they have a story to tell. Frequently, something that's very deep in their own biographies and um, you know a, a story they're compelled to tell. And I've always felt lucky that that's not the kind of writer I am because I don't know once you've told that story what your next book is, you know. I'm the kind of writer who just wanted to find a lot of stories and tell a lot of different stories. Well, Sarah Canary was my first novel. It did, it, like I, as I said, uh, not, you know, not a sensation, but for a first novel by an unknown writer. Um, very good, everybody very happy with me at the publishing house. My second novel was The Sweetheart Season, sold far less well. My third novel was Sister Noon, sold almost nothing. So, you know, I'm on this unhappy path that your publishing house does not like to see you on. And I did have a sort of sense that I needed, uh, you know, not, not that I needed a bestseller, God knows, but that I needed to reverse that line. I needed, you know, just for the sales to rise instead of fall. Um, I was at a bookstore in, Corte Madero, California, called Book Passage. And I had gone to hear a friend of mine who was going to do a reading, and there was a sign on the wall that said the Jane Austen Book Club. And I was in a bookstore, so I thought that was the title of the book. And I felt, um, you know, sort of gripped with envy. I thought, what a great idea for a book. Why do I not ever have ideas like that? Why, do, why does everybody else have these great ideas and not me? Um, and then I looked more closely at the sign and I realized it was in fact a book club where people were talking about Austin's novels and it was not a book somebody had written. And um, I, uh, you know, it had already sort of lodged in my head as a great idea for a book. Um, this, I, I have to stress, this is not my usual experience. Usually I struggle to kind of accumulate enough things to put together to be a novel. So it's very unusual that I just, the idea is just, it's like being hit by lightning. But, um, but I attended the reading and as I was driving home, um, you know, when I got in the car to drive home, I had decided I would write a book called The Jane Austen Book Club. And by the time I'd driven maybe 10 minutes, 
I had the whole structure of the book figured out. Um, and I did think, I thought this is a very commercial idea for a book. I wonder how I will screw it up so that nobody actually reads it. In somebody else's hands, this would be a bestseller, I thought, but I, not in mine. Oh, it's been astonishing. I'm, I'm, I don't sound speechless, but I am. I am speechless. Uh, it, it's, as I said, it's, a, it's kind of a wonderful circled journey that um, has, has just been such a gift.